So when Edla takes that uh, rat trap seller home, then what her father tells? Let's see first, it's queer that things have gone downhill with him as badly as that, said the daughter. Last night, I did not think there was anything about him to show that he had once been an educated man. So Edla makes it very clear to her father that no doubt that this man, you know, had, uh, you know, had to face many difficulties. But one thing is there that I was able to make out that uh, there is nothing in this man which shows that he once had been an educated man. Okay, if somebody had been an educated person once, then his education doesn't disappear. Okay, it shows even when one becomes a beggar. Though with education, one doesn't become a beggar, but one never say, you can never say, but at least your education shows. So you must have patience, my little girl, said the father. As soon as he gets clean and dressed up, you will see something different. Last night, he was naturally embarrassed. The tramp manners will finally will fall away from with the tramp clothes. So father, you know, he was of different view. He was of the opinion that uh, uh, that your outward outward appearance, that your clothes they define your persona. That is not right. So he says he tells his daughter that uh, the moment he will be clean and dressed up properly, you will see that he is quite different. He says that at night, at night he was very embarrassed because of his bad clothes. But the minute his bad clothes, tramp clothes will go, he will also uh, get rid of his bad manners. But that doesn't happen. Isn't it? So just as he said this, the door opened and the stranger entered. Yes, now he was truly clean and well-dressed. The, the valet had bathed him, cut his hair and shaved him. Moreover, he was dressed in a good looking suit of clothes, which belonged to the Iron Master. He wore white shirt and a starched collar and cold shoes. So now that the same tramp, the same rat trapper, rat trap seller, now he was very well dressed up and was wearing everything nice, shoes and a dress and everything. And all these things were of the Iron Master himself. But although his guest was now so well groomed, the Iron Master did not seem pleased. Why? He looked at him with puckered bro and it was easy to understand that when he had seen the strange fellow in the uncertain reflection from the furnace, he might have made a mistake. But that now, when he stood there in broad daylight, it was impossible to make him, to mistake him for an old acquaintance. So now the uh, Iron Master is, uh, you know, he gets a clear idea that the person whom he mistook to be an old acquaintance because of the uh, dim light of the furnace, because of the kinds of clothes he was wearing, because his face was not very clear because of the kind of beard and all he had, no, but in the broad daylight, he cannot mistake that person to be his old friend. Right? So what does this mean? He thundered. Now the Iron Master thundered. So why did he thunder? Why did he spoke so shout? Why did he shout? The stranger made no attempt to dissimulate. He saw at once that his splendor had come to an end. So even the rat trap seller did not try to uh, pretend to be something else. It's not that he tried to hide his real identity. He remained naturally standing there and he was able to make out like now that uh, magnificence which he was about to enjoy had come to an end. It's not my fault, sir. I never pretended to be anything but a poor trader and I pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the forge, but no harm has been done. At worst, I can put on my rags again and go away. So that person, you know, rat trap seller is very clear in his idea. He says, sir, number one, it was not my fault that if I have come here, I always told you that I'm a poor trader and uh, I asked you to be there, but you did not agree. And now also nothing has gone. There has not been any harm done so far because at the worst, I can just remove your clothes and I can put on my rags again and go away. So well said the iron master hesitating a little. It was not quite honest either. You must admit that. And I should not be surprised if the sheriff would like to have something to say in the matter. 
so now the uh, iron master says that even you were not very honest on the other part it's okay that you did not want to come here but you did not make it very clear that you did not know me right so even uh, it was not quite honest either and moreover now if i call the sharif that is the policeman then he will say do something the tramp took a step forward and struck the table with his fist the tramp you know he had a clear idea of what the life was about so he you know uh, struck the table with his fist and announced he said now i am going to tell you mr iron master how things are this whole world is nothing but a big rat trap all the good things that are offered to you are nothing but cheese rents and bits of pork set out to drag a poor fellow into trouble and if the sheriff comes now and locks me up for this then you mr iron master must remember that a day may come when you yourself may want to get a big piece of pork and then you will get caught in the trap so what the iron must what the rat trap seller is doing he is telling the iron master the same philosophy of the world being a rat trap the point is that if you are doing something wrong to me today then tomorrow the same wrong might happen with you also right the iron master began to laugh that was not so badly said my good fellow perhaps we should let the sheriff alone on christmas eve perhaps we should let the sheriff alone on christmas eve but now get out of here as fast as you can so now the iron master understood maybe uh, he might have been you know touched by what he said so he said okay let's not call the police but at least now you leave this room house at the earliest but just as the man was opening the door the daughter said i think he ought to stay with us today i don't want him to go and with that she went and closed the door so when this iron rat trap seller was about to leave the house what happened adla came forward in his support and told his her father that he should not go let's see what in the world are you doing said the father so father was of course offended at what his daughter was doing the daughter stood there quite embarrassed and hardly knew what to answer that morning she had felt so happy when she thought how home like and christmasy she was going to make things for the poor hungry wretch she could not get away from the idea all at once and that was why she had interceded for the vagabond so the girl had been so happy throughout the day because that uh, rat trap seller would make her day so beautiful because if you don't share and care on christmas then your christmas is not celebrated in the real spirit so she wanted to celebrate in the true spirit and to serve the needy person but the idea of the whole thing being you know wasted she could not digest right so that's why she interceded for the beggar bond i'm thinking of the stranger here said the young girl he walks and walks the whole year long and there is probably not a single place in the whole country where he is welcome and feel at home wherever he returns he is chased away always he is afraid of being arrested and cross examined i should like to have him enjoy a day of peace with us just one day in the whole year so this was the uh, idea of edla she wanted that this man should have a single day of the whole year in peace with them right so the iron master mumbled something in his beard he could not bring himself to oppose her so oh, edla was so convincing her purpose was so pious that her father could not say no to her it was all a mistake of course she continued but anyway i don't think we ought to chase away a human being whom we have asked to come here and to whom we have promised a christmas cheer you do preach worse than a parson said the iron master i only hope you won't have to regret this so father makes it very clear to the daughter that the only thing is that she should not regret this decision okay so what has adla done children so far adla has confided in that 
rat trap seller and she has tried to treat her, him with respect right and uh, now the father's only concern is that they should not have to they might not have to repent because of this mistake but why do they think why do they think that they might have to repent what is their worry what is their worry right now what is iron master's worry if you know you can raise hand what is the iron master's worry iron master's worry is that the same rat trap seller might rob them might cheat them got it because it's very difficult to believe these kinds of people but edla wants to do him a good she wants to do a favor to her, him because it is these people who have asked him to come to their house and they have promised him a christmas cheer so now they cannot take their words back so the young girl took the stranger by the hand and led him up to the table now sit down and eat she said for she could see that the father had given him the man with it rat traps said not a word he only sat down and helped himself to the food time after time he looked at the young girl who had interceded for him why had she done it what could the crazy idea be so the rat trap seller was actually very uh, you know uh, excited he was really keen to know like why had that girl helped her helped him he wanted to know like why had that girl interfered for him so what might be the idea so what's the answer children why had this girl interfered why had this girl interceded for this young man the only reason is that she was a very kind philanthropic and a generous girl and she just wanted to celebrate her uh, christmas in the true christmas spirit and the truest christmas spirit is when you are able to take care of the poor and needy and are able to share with him what you have when you are able to make some person happy that's the best of the way you can celebrate your christmas so her idea was nothing more than that right after that christmas eve at ramses passed just as it always had the stranger did not cause any trouble because he did nothing but sleep so the christmas was over and it was over in a very usual manner the stranger that is the rat trap seller did not do anything did he didn't cause any problem to them because he did nothing except sleeping and eating the whole forenoon he lay on the sofa in one of the guest rooms and slept at one stretch at noon they woke him up so that he could have his share of the good christmas fare but after that he slept again it seemed as though for many years he had not been able to sleep as quietly as safely as there at ramses so the that man you know he had good sleep he could eat as much as he wanted so it was for the first time that he had been able to sleep as sleep so well in the evening when the christmas tree was lighted they woke him up again and stood for a while in the drawing room blinking as through the candlelight heard him but after that he disappeared again two hours later he was aroused once more he then had to go down into the dining room and eat the christmas fish and porridge so children uh, in the evening when he had to he was asked to come to the drawing room to lit the can, uh, christmas tree and all and afterwards he again went to sleep he again came up he was again aroused in the e in, at night to have dinner and after dinner also he might go to sleep so as soon as he got up from the table he went around to each one he went around to each one present and said thank you and good night but when he came to the young girl she gave him to understand that it was her father's intention that the suit which he wore was to be a christmas present he did not have to return it so after uh, afterwards when he had to say thank you to the girl also the girl told him that he could keep that christmas suit with him got it 
so basically the girl is making him comfortable that in case he would want to leave then he can leave it was all his choice but it's not that this she was asking him to leave but at least she could keep the suit with him he did not have to return it and if he wanted to spend next christmas eve in a place where he could rest in peace and be sure that no evil would befall him he would be welcomed back again and then adla promised him uh, that he would be given the same kind of uh, peace and all if he would like to come back to their house in the next christmas again got it so the man with the rat traps did not answer anything to this he only stared at the young girl in boundless amazement so when somebody treats you with so much of respect okay and in return wants nothing then uh, you you one becomes speechless so that very rat trap seller also kept on looking at her in boundless amazement he was so happy that there is there can be somebody who is so good when at about 10 o'clock they drove back from the church the young girl sat and hung her head even more dejectedly than usual at church she had learned that one of the old crofters of the iron works had been robbed by a man who went around selling red traps okay children so next day in the morning the girl with her father went to the church and there she got to she got a news that the crofter had been robbed by a rat trap seller of his 30 kronas got it so now when she got to know this news what will come to her mind can you make out can you make out if she will come to know that the crofter had been robbed by a rat trap seller what will come to her mind the same thing that even now because they are out of their house and that rat trap seller is there at their house so now the father as well as daughter might feel that now the rat trap seller will do away with cash and all from their house right this is what they might think yes that was a fine fellow you let into the house said her father i only wonder how many silver spoons are left in the cupboard by this time so father's concern is very genuine and he's now worried like maybe he might have spent with all the uh, you know expensive and costly things from the house the wagon had hardly stopped at the front steps when the iron master asked the valet whether the stranger was still there so they, they reached their house very fast and the moment they reached their house they asked the attendant if the uh, rat trap seller was still there what did the attendant say he added that he had heard at church that the man was a thief the valet answered that the fellow had gone and that he had not taken anything with him at all on the contrary he had left behind a little package which miss will manson was to be kind enough to accept as a christmas present so the attendant told the father that uh, number 1 that person has gone but he has not taken away anything with him but on the contrary he has left behind a package for adla and he wants that adla should accept that gift as a christmas present so that thief the one who stole at crofter's house the same man when he was treated nicely by adla he could not think about deceiving her rather he he gave her a gift let's see what is that the young girl opened the package which was so badly done up that the contents came into view at once right so she opened the packet she gave a little cry of joy she found a small rat trap and in it lay three wrinkled 10 kroner notes so what did she find in the package number one there was one rat trap and secondly there were three kroner notes the same currency which he had taken from the crofter so the money which he had taken from crofter the money which he had robbed from the crofter he had he gave it to he gave as a gift to adler let's see what she has written what he wrote over there in the rat trap lay a letter written in large jagged characters honored and noble miss miss so he addressed her as honored and noble miss he did not know her name since you have been so nice to me all day long as if i was a captain 
so you treated me like a captain i want to be nice to you in return as if i was a real captain so you treated me like a captain and i will also behave now i will also treat you as if i were a captain so far i do not want you to be embarrassed at this christmas season by a thief but you can give back the money to the old man on the road side so he says because i don't want that you should be ashamed of yourself for helping a person like me so i want that you should return this currency to that old man crofter who lives on the road side who has the money pouch hanging on the window frame as a bait for the poor wanderers so the one who has kept that uh, pouch hanging at the uh, at the window frame as if it were a bait for the poor wanderers the rat trap is a christmas present from a rat who would have been caught in this world's rat trap if he had not been raised to captain so he says that i'm giving you this rat trap and it is this rat trap giving of the rat trap to you is an indication that this rat has got freedom from the from this rat trap because of yours being so nice because you treated me like a captain and now i have been raised to the status of a captain and i dare not think about stealing so because in that way he got power to clear himself so as a captain i have the potential to clear myself of all the sins i have committed written with friendship and high regard captain von star so he even signs himself as captain von star right so that's how adla whose goodness kindness understanding made even a thief becomes a captain got it have you got it children okay so today we you people go through the questions and tomorrow we'll be uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow we'll be discussing its question answers right and next week on monday there will be test uh, you people have your test today on uh, tuesday and on next tuesday will be test of your complete uh, this book uh, what we call it flamingo okay there will be the test of flamingo especially the chapters the rat trap and indigo only two chapters will be in the test next week got it okay